It is the moment you all have been waiting for. It is time for a new edition of... Man, I really hope these numbers are right. But you all know it as Damage Comparisons, where we take really good guns and put them up against the hardest activity in the game, the raid, and we see what the best thing to use is. Today, we're going to start with the Beast Encounter in the Leviathan. The biggest thing to note is that all of these tests were done in the normal version of the raid. I do not anticipate any of the results found in this video to drastically change with the prestige mode, but the prestige mode may alter strategies that make other weapons better. We will revisit these situations if things change significantly. There were many things that I wanted to learn before I felt comfortable with starting damage comparisons with weapons, but the main thing was learning about the Empowering Spores buff. Empowering Spores is the buff that you get whenever you pop one of the spores with the beam. I wanted to find out how much of a damage buff this actually gave. So, for starters, I had myself and my team use completely random weapons, and we buffed up with Empowering Spores starting at 0, 12, 24, 36, 48, and 60 stacks. The reason for those stack numbers specifically is because I imagine most teams stick together when getting their buffs. We stopped at 60 because if you are getting stacks higher than 60, one, you're gonna just annihilate the beasts using almost any weapon, and two, you don't really need this video. So, as an example, here's me with a 305 Mida at 305 power in the normal mode raid. On screen are all of my damage values with all of the various spore stack buffs. Strangely enough, my damage goes up based on the spore buff. Who would have thought? Anyway, beneath those numbers are our multipliers. The first row of multipliers shows how much of a damage increase we get compared to a zero stack of buffs, and the second row is how much of an increase we get compared to the previous stack of buffs. I thought this would be just sort of interesting data to see, but it doesn't have a huge impact on the encounter, because generally speaking, there is no reason that you should not go for as many stacks of spores as possible. We do see in the second row that we hit this diminishing return value of 1.22 times increase over the previous, but that's still a lot of damage to gain. Note that for the final multiplier in the first row, that 10.46 number, that ranged from 10.45 to 10.5. This is the game just doing some rounding based on your weapon. That also goes for the previous values as well. The game does some rounding depending on the weapon type, and any rounding that does happen is not statistically significant. For example, a simulated Legend of Acreus shotgun pellet with 48 stacks results in 3,801 damage. The actual damage, 3,810. Very minor rounding. Something else I wanted to find out was how much health each beast had, and for the most part, each beast has about 464,000 health on normal mode. We did run into some weird things with beast health, though. Sometimes they had 30,000 less health, sometimes they had 10,000 more health, but for the most part, they have 464,000 health. After doing plenty of tests and plenty of runs with various items and asking people what they run with, we came down to a few weapons that people tend to use for this encounter. Merciless, the Raid Sword It Stared Back, Hawthorne's Shotgun, the Curtain Call Rocket Launcher, and the Raid Rocket, which for all intents and purposes is very similar to Curtain Call. We then also tested some other guns like Wardcliff Coil and Legend of Acreus to see what they were capable of. All of our tests were done at 60 stacks, probably should have done 36 and 48, but luckily we can simulate that data as we need with very high accuracy. Let's start with Merciless. We're using a 305 Merciless on a 304 character with 60 stacks. When we fire our Merciless, we get 5,392 damage per beam, multiplied by 7 beams per shot for 37,744 damage. If we divide total health by one shot, so 464,000, divided by 37,744, we get a little over 12, 12.29. So in theory, it should take 13 merciless shots to kill this beast. 
We fire off 12, and yeah, it's really close. Close enough where it only takes two melee attacks to finish off the beast. We're going to deal just short of 453,000 damage with 12 shots, plus my two melees gets us to 464,000. We are capable of firing off 12 shots of Merciless in just over 13 seconds, resulting in an average DPS of 34,234 at 60 stacks during the time where we're actually dealing damage. We also have some simulated data here to show off other buff stacks, lower buff stacks, 36, 48, 24, to show off how much damage you are capable of. The Raid Sword and Swords in general are the next most popular, so let's take a look at the Raid Sword in action. We'll be using uppercuts to slay our beast, and it takes 10 uppercuts to do so on a 60 stack. Our sword is also 305, and our character, I believe, is either 304 or 305. At full Whirlwind Blade stacks, in which it only takes two of the uppercuts to hit our maximum amount of stacks, which is five, we're dealing... 46,535 damage per swing. Although I did have some swings that hit slightly harder, but we're going to keep it at 46,535 because that was the number that appeared the most amount of times. 10 swings takes about 12 to 13 seconds to do. I was going slow in this clip, averaging out to just over 36,000 DPS while you are actually using the weapon. I will say it is easier to use a sword rather than a gun, but it's not that much harder to use a gun for this fight. Next up, Hawthorne's Shotgun. What makes Hawthorne's so good is that one, it holds seven shots, and two, it is full auto. So you can just burst the weapon like crazy. I have a 302 Hawthorne's equipped on a 304 power character, so let's see what it can do. Hawthorne's has 12 pellets per shot, each of them doing either 2334 or 2335 damage. Let's just call it half and half. That means we're doing 28,014 damage per shot to the body. Hawthorne's headshot multiplier is 1.1x, meaning if we hit every single pellet to the head, our headshot damage is going to be 30,815. Multiply both by 14 shots to get us in between 392,196 and 431,410 damage. That's not quite enough to kill our beast outright, but it's still an awful lot of damage. We're able to pump out seven shots in 2.3 seconds. Unfortunately, the reload's really gonna hurt our DPS, and 14 shots takes 11 seconds. Our average DPS over those 11 seconds are shown in the bottom row and can range in between the two values depending on how many crits versus non-crits that you get. Finally, we're gonna look at the curtain call rocket launcher you can substitute the raid rocket launcher for this as well they are pretty similar in nature and for the purposes of this test in particular we're going to call them the same i know they're not exactly the same during a legend of acrius test i had my friend do a test fire of one raid rocket shot on a beast with 60 stacks i did not believe him when i saw the number so i tried with my own curtain call rocket with a 60 stack at 305 on both the character and the weapon, we fire one rocket, and oh my dear lord, that is half of its health bar gone in one rocket. Reload that, fire another, and the beast is basically dead. With two rockets, we did 438,000 damage. How? How are we doing that? Well, it turns out, when cluster bombs all stack up on a target, like we later learned with Axis in Destiny 1, they do a lot of damage. Shooting a rocket in between the legs of a beast lets a lot of those cluster bombs stay stacked up together, but it's not a surefire thing that you're going to get things to stack well every single time. So on average, I would say three rockets at 60 stacks at 305 is probably going to do the trick. However, since the damage can range so much depending on how many cluster bombs hit and all the different damage values that they have, your individual rocket damage will vary. And by the way, if you do end up killing your beast in two rockets, which can be done in as little as 4.3 seconds, you are doing over 100,000 DPS. Those are all of the main weapons that I wanted to take a look at, but there were still a couple of other unique items that I wanted to try out just in case. Two of those are Wardcliffe Coil and Legend of Acrius. 
So, Wardcliff Coil. Surely, if Cluster Bombs were tearing through a beast, Wardcliff is also gonna shred, right? Unfortunately, wrong. Very wrong. Very, very wrong. A 301 Wardcliff with a 55 stack is barely able to scratch the surface of a beast's health bar, to the point where I didn't even bother to continue to test it. My friends found similar results with their rockets ranging from 28 to 32,000 damage. I think this has to be a bug related to when the coil was patched to deal not so much damage during the baths encounter, because I cannot believe that this is performing as poorly as it is. Our second to last test is the Legend of Acrius, the Rage Shotgun. We've got two shots in the chamber, so let's get to shooting. Let me just pop that barrier and... Huh. That seems really low. Oh, wait. Our stacks are gone. Yeah, so as of the making of this video, both Titans and Hunters are having issues with their class abilities, removing their empowering spore stacks completely. So, if you are one of those classes, I would not risk losing your stacks via the use of your class ability. Try not to use it. Warlocks didn't appear to have an issue, but maybe just in case, you hold off. Anyway, our tests with 60 stacks results in about 390,000 damage over 7 Legend of Acrius shots, which we can fire in about 12 and a half seconds, going as fast as we can. The big question is then, is it better than Hawthorns? Well, they both end up doing eerily similar damage after expending their entire ammo supply at 60 stacks and, well, all stacks, probably because Legend of Acrius deals double the damage at half the ammo. Weird. It's just that Hawthorns does it about 1.5 seconds faster. So if you're okay with killing your target 1.5 seconds slower at 60 stacks, then feel free to use Acrius. I guess technically... Hawthorns is better if we want to dig that deep, but I really doubt you're going to come down to those last 1.5 seconds being the difference maker in this encounter. Our final test is a grenade. A pulse grenade. Pulse grenades are insane in Destiny 2 for single target damage. I don't know what happened that caused Bungie to beef them up so much, but they are insanely deadly. And guess what? If you get a 60 stack and you are a titan with two pulse grenades, all you need to do is throw your pulse grenades. That's it. They do 40,000 damage a tick at 60 stacks. Not total damage, that is per tick. There is no situation where it is a bad idea to use your grenades. But Dado, I'm a hunter. Fear not, chooser of the not titan, because if you go Night Stalker, you can simulate the experience a little bit with a void wall grenade. So, what did we actually end up learning from this? Is there truly a best gun for this encounter? Well, yeah, but also no. I would say that the Raid Rocket or a Cluster Bomb Rocket would be the best weapon to use. But, if you want to use one of the other weapons listed in this video, it's not really a big deal if you're capable of getting high Spore Stacks. Legend of Acrius certainly isn't the best gun, but I still like using it because it's a really fun gun, and because I mainly play a Titan, so pulse grenades are insane. If you like the sword, use the sword. If you like Merciless, use Merciless. You end up doing so much damage with almost any weapon listed in this video, plus with a pulse or void wall grenade, that for the most part, it basically doesn't matter. Anyway, Callus damage is coming up next. There is a lot of stuff to research with Callus, so it is taking a bit longer than a typical boss experience, but it is coming soon. Thank you all very much for watching, and enjoy that optimal DPS.